today's topic is, is blockchain ready for ad tech? So with that question, I thought of asking more questions because it's complicated. And you look at it, the first question is, is it blockchain or blockchain? Right? So, and I looked at the paper that's originally written by this unidentified billionaire, I guess, somebody who can just wake up and write a paper and just create something and make billions of dollars. That's only possible at this time, only using technology. But there is no word named blockchain in that paper. And there is a word block, there is a word chain, but there's no blockchain. So we don't need to worry about whether it's blockchain or block chain, whatever you feel right, you can use it. Is it a hyper real? It's neither. I remember my days in Java back in like 25 years ago, when people use the word Java, there's like a 20 people surrounded, something is going on and the conferences fill up. And there were no internet. This is like a magazines, so I gotta go buy them and they draw this picture that I couldn't understand, but they write all things about Java. I tried to learn like a fourth line or fifth line, I would fall asleep. And they talk about Java ring, you wear this Java ring, you can go near to the refrigerator, you can open the refrigerator. I'm like, why do you need to wear a ring to open a refrigerator? And I was building Java applets. How many of you build Java applets here? Right, applets is gonna change the world. And you know, I, I write all these event listeners, like a 20 lines of code to click a mouse button that's gonna just minimize the window. My colleague sit next to me and he write like a three word code in Visual Basic. I was still challenging him, Java is gonna change the world. And it is, but the point is, it's not about the hype that created by the industry or the magazines or whatever underlying technology matters. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And who is Satoshi? I wanna see him at some point, but wish him luck. Should I invest in Bitcoin? I have no idea, that's up to you. Is blockchain web 3.0? Oh, I'm interested about that, because the next wave of building distributed applications, should we leverage blockchain or not? That's a serious question engineers should be asking about it. And where do I start? So I prepared this talk originally for a 45 minutes deep dive tech talk, then starting to look at the audience, because we wanted to make sure this is not about us showing off what we do or what we build, it's about learning and teaching. So we looked at the audience and there is a diverse group. We have a people from sales, we have people from product, we have people from engineering. So it's an important topic, everybody wants to know what's going on. So we kind of adjusted the timing and slides. So we have more people and we have our partners as well as my team to talk about overall what is blockchain and where is uh, blockchain and is it ready for ad tech. What I wanted to do in the next few slides is you to walk out with one thing. If people come and talk to you about blockchain, you don't have this vague, some kind of a guilty feeling that everybody knows about blockchain but I'm the only one don't know about blockchain. That's the thing I wanted to clear it out. Let's do it. How does blockchain operate? So think of like creating transactions. One or more transactions get created. And the network of nodes, these nodes are a bunch of computers, P2P, peer-to-peer -peer computing network, sitting there, ready to process the transactions. And the transactions need to be validated because anybody can create a transactions. And the validation is proof of work or mining. I'm gonna use a lot of these terms. I apologize if you don't know but make a note of it, you can look it up. There are different uh, examples on the net, so you can just learn it, but I need to finish it quickly, that's why I'm just gonna rush this through. So validation, those transactions get validated. Then the verified transactions are added to the block. That's where the block is, and the block added to the blockchain. So a bunch of transactions in a block, and a bunch of blocks is a blockchain. That's the concept, it's very simple, and these blocks, if you look at it, that's the header of the block. Each block is, has a reference to the next block using this hash. And the data structure underneath is like a multiple transactions uses hashes of hashes, using like a Merkley tree uh, data structure to build these blocks. So that's a very simple way of saying like what is blockchain and how does it operate. Bunch of transactions get created over the network of nodes, validated and added to the blocks. 
So what is a blockchain platform or a protocol? Remember I said like if somebody tells you blockchain, I want you to know at least what they're talking about. So these are the terms when somebody tells you they're talking about the blockchain platform. So again, what is a platform? It's somebody can build on top of it. Right, so any applications can build on top of it. Like you see Bitcoin here. I'm not talking about the cryptocurrency or somebody who makes billions of dollars overnight. I'm talking about a Bitcoin as a platform that transactions run through that. So these are the popular bit, uh, blockchain. See, I'm got confused between Bitcoin and blockchain, right? That's what this does. So blockchain platforms, uh, these are the popular blockchain platforms. So I picked two of them just to show what are the things you should look at it to differentiate, to understand whether it's a distributed or not. I mean, blockchains are distributed. It's public or not. Both are public blockchains. And as I said, data structure, all blockchains use Merkley, data, Merkley tree data structure because of efficiency and validation and it's a hashes of hashes, so it uses the data structure. It applies blockchain technology, no doubt. But the Ethereum uses for running those transactions is like a smart contract. So people write this code, it's called smart contracts. It runs through that decentralized platform. Whereas Bitcoin, it's a platform that people use for electronic caching system. So it's, it's really a blockchain platform. People use it to cache their transactions. But the miners, remember I mentioned about validations, people who verified validations, they collect ethers when they use Ethereum platform, when Bitcoin miners earn the Bitcoin. So that is a whole separate topic about what mining is. If you don't know, just can search for what is Bitcoin mining. A lot of people buy powerful hardware and solve these complicated puzzles and rush to validate those blocks when they get added. So that's called mining. So they earn this Ethereum as well as Ethers. So that's picking two different uh, popular Bitcoin platforms to compare side by side. But this is an important slide I want you to explain. At a very high level, there are three types of blockchains, private, public, and consortium. So if you look at public, anybody can create a transaction, anybody can validate, and anyone can verify. Right? It's a very open, open uh, platform. And the volume is high because people put a lot of transactions. The speed is low, obviously. There's no doubt about that. So the examples are Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. If you look at private blockchain, it's the opposite. It's permission-based. Any company can create their own blockchain platform and allow only specific users to create transactions. It's permission-based. Volume is low, obviously. The speed is faster. Is it trusted? Depends on who you allow. Obviously, it's permission-based private means I would allow only people who are allowed in my network. The consortium is an interesting thing. Multiple companies, group of companies, or group of people can create a blockchain across them to access. So they, it's also permission-based. Trusting and volume and speed, it all depends on who they allow. So people talk to you about blockchain, you should think about whether it's private or public or consortium-based. I gave those examples. So this is a platform. So now, all these applications that you're hearing and seeing is built one of these platforms. So you can go to Azure and create your own private blockchain platform and set up a couple of nodes, create transactions, and validate against them. It takes like an hour. If you're really interested, you should absolutely try that. So how can you learn? As I said, I, my, my goal for this 10-minute talk is to explain you at a very high level, to clear the mystery about what is blockchain at a very high level. So what are the things that you can learn from here? Definitely read some papers. There is a link there and try to understand some basic algorithms and data structures, what is hashing means, what is one-way hashing means, how do they validate and translate, and uh, what is the Merkley tree data structure, it will help you. And if you're really not trying to understand the under the hood of blockchain, it's still okay to understand some of the concepts, how public and private keys work, and what is consensus means, what is mining means. But most importantly, if you wanted to build an app, go create your own private blockchain network, either using multi-chain or Azure, you could just Go there, there is a template, you can download and create a server. You can set up two nodes and run an entire blockchain network on your computer or on Azure. So you can tell your friends, hey, I run my own blockchain. They probably think that you're a millionaire again. 
But so then learn about smart contract and deploy. So you can use the languages like Solidity. It's like a very simple JavaScript language. You can deploy using a framework called Truffle or whatnot. So I just wanted to give you the hints like what are the things instead of like going and zooming like so many things, these are things you can easily pick it up. But so let's say you don't want to build a new app or build a new network, you, you still can use some of those apps, extend their APIs or extend their SDKs so you can still get be part of some of the blockchain application. So in your head I want you to think like three levels. One is the blockchain platform, the second one is you creating your own blockchain network. Then the third one is you are creating your own app, like a distributed app. The fourth one is I don't want to do any of those. I just wanted to use an app. You still can use their APIs and build an app. So that's what blockchain is. It's very simple. But anything that I didn't say about cryptocurrency or ICO, I don't know anything about it. Just ignore them. So the questions you should be asking, is it a blockchain when you're talking about a platform or an application? Is it a private or a public or a consortium? What am I getting into? If I'm sending the transactions, who is seeing and who is verifying? What business problem you're trying to solve? That's the first thing we ask. What use cases you're really trying to solve? But everything else, you know, look at all the high CEOs that making like generating millions and millions of dollars. Developers can create a currency. And, you know, I see uh, people like doing all sorts of coins, like banana coins and, you know, kitties, whatever you want. But that's not what this talk about. But that's a distraction for an engineer and a product leaders if you want to think about how blockchain as a technology want to solve business problems. So with that, let's get into business. So we're going to cover three things. I'm going to assume nobody knows about ad tech, which is true actually. Everybody thinks they all know. So Mike is going to come and demystify some of those things. What is the complexity under the hood of ad tech? Then privacy and trust and transparency is the two of the use cases. Remember I said what use cases are business problem we're trying to solve. Those two use cases we're going to pick. And our partners and uh, my colleagues, Anjali and Mike, are here to walk you through. Uh, this is going to be a fun conversation.